Hi everyone, today we will be making several types of epoxy and wood earrings using scrap lumber. Let's get started. The first time I made wood earrings was about four and a half or five years ago when I started taking woodworking a little bit more seriously. I was generating a lot of cutoff pieces and a lot of scrap pieces that I wanted to repurpose into something useful and practical. Plus, I was running out of birthday gift ideas for my girlfriend at the time. I'm happy to report that she is now my wife and the only logical conclusion is that the earrings couldn't have been that bad. Today. We will be utilizing thin pieces of walnut, paduk, cocobolo, and ebony for this project. If you do not have an arsenal of woodworking tools to mill rough lumber into thin pieces, and you are interested in doing this project, you can find thin stocks at your local lumber supply store or online woodworking stores such as Rockler or Woodcraft. You can even purchase knife scales from eBay as they're typically 3 8 of an inch thick and are ideal sizes for this project. On the note of minimal tools, while you will see me use bigger power tools in this video, there are workarounds that I will try to discuss throughout. With the thin stock cut to more manageable sizes, it is now time for us to shift focus onto building the epoxy mold. I'm using a cross cut sled here to make these cuts a little safer. I have a scrap piece of a quarter inch MDF, however, you can use anything you like. I'm not shooting for a specific dimension, rather eyeballing a size that I think might be appropriate. For the mold, you will need a bottom piece and four sides. The important thing to keep in mind here is the consistency of the cuts by using a repeatable setup. Once you have all of the pieces cut, you can join them together by using the force. If you have not mastered it yet, cyanoacrylate, aka super glue, combined with an accelerant is a great alternative. With the mold completed, we now need to make it leak-proof. While packaging tape may work well for this task, tuck tape or house wrap tape works best for this application. Once the tape is applied, we need to run a bead of silicone around all internal corners to prevent epoxy from leaking. Before we move forward into mixing the epoxy and uh, doing some epoxy pour here, I wanted to take a quick moment to discuss this mold that we just created. Um, so while it's small, it looks relatively simple, it's really not that easy to make. Uh, first, you know, you need a tool to be able to cut them, cut the pieces to dimension. In this case, you'll probably want a table saw to be able to accomplish that task. So that's one thing. The second thing is putting all of the tape, the tuck tape in this case, and making sure that they seat in nicely, especially at the 90 degree corners, when the piece is so small and it's hard to get into, 
it's finicky. Um, I really did not enjoy doing that process at all. And when you've done all of that, you still have to go into all of the corners and put a bead of silicone to seal it because you absolutely want to be sure that it is not going to leak since you're pouring epoxy into it. And on top of that, you have to let it dry for almost an entire day to be able to make a pour. So it's got a lot of disadvantages. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because if I had to do it over again, I probably would not be making this mold. I would just purchase a silicone mold from an online retailer like Amazon and call it a day. Uh, they're reusable, they are easy to use, they require no tools to make, and they're inexpensive. Uh, so if you're going to be doing this in any capacity, uh, particularly more than like a one-off piece, I would say just go ahead and purchase a silicone mold. So an alternative to this mold or a silicone mold, especially if you want to do a simple one-off project just for fun, is to create a mold around the wood itself using tape. I still think tuck tape probably works better than your standard shipping packaging tape. Um, perhaps duct tape will work pretty well too. So what you do is you, you have the piece of wood um, and you tape around the perimeter, ensuring that the height of the well that's created is longer or taller than the amount of epoxy you intend to pour. And then you would make sure this stays upright, do the epoxy pour, let it cure, and uh, you should be good from there. I hope that method is useful for some of you. Uh, for us today, we are going to proceed forward with this particular mold because it's already made and dry and we've committed to it. And so I want to see it to completion. For the epoxy component of this project, we will need two part epoxy, pigments or dyes, mixing cup with stirs and gloves. In most cases, epoxy is mixed by volume. While you can buy cups specifically for that purpose, I try to use what I have around the house. For this specific brand of tabletop epoxy by Promarine Supplies, I came up with a way to measure them by mass. The ratio is approximately 6 to 5 for mixture A to B. This way, I can make smaller batches with high level of consistency. We are pouring the first cup here at 60 grams of mixture A and 50 grams of mixture B. When you're working with epoxy, make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions on temperature requirements. Usually the preferred temperature is anywhere from 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or approximately 24 to 30 degrees Celsius. If the ambient temperature is too low, the mixture can take a long time to cure or won't fully harden at all. If the ambient temperature is too high, the epoxy can cure too fast and reach high temperatures resulting in cracks. In my case, the ambient temperature in the garage is approximately 60 degrees. While this is not preferred, I do have a small heat gun blowing on the side to help bring the temperatures up.
With the resin fully cured, we can now begin the demolding process. As you can see, we have a lot of excess epoxy that we need to remove. This can be accomplished using a rough grit of sandpaper on a flat surface with a hand sander or a belt sander. With our stocks flattened, we can now choose the size and shape of our earrings. Today, I wanted to experiment with a teardrop shape as well as a few geometric shapes I found on the internet. These pieces can be cut with a handsaw or a bandsaw. The edges can then be further refined on a belt sander. If you want to produce a high volume of earrings with a specific shape, you can also create jigs such as this one for a high level of consistency. With the shapes refined, I am sanding every surface progressively from 220 grit to 400 grit to 600 grit and finally 1500 grits. At the end of the process, everything should look and feel smooth. The epoxy should now be translucent to clear. For finishing, I'm using Danish oil. You can also choose to buff the surface with carnauba wax. Using a small drill bit, we can now bore a hole suitable for the hardware. I am using jewelry making hardware you can buy on Amazon by searching earring making kit. For your convenience, there is a link in the description below. With the hardware installed, we are done. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click the like button below and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.